Everyone, here we are in the last large unit for AP electromagnetic induction. So we looked at it in the demonstration in the lab today was that if we had a solenoid and we had magnetic fields changing inside that solenoid, in that solenoid you can see is not even connected to a battery, but moving a magnet or a magnetic field near that solenoid created voltages and voltage created currents that went through the solenoid. So without even powering that solenoid, you can create currents by changing magnetism. So the first thing we can talk about here is magnetic flux. In magnetic flux, unlike electric flux, electric flux we did 3D surfaces for our Gaussian spheres. For magnetic flux, we're gonna do 2D surfaces, so like the a uh, flat plane of the edge of a solenoid or the flat plane of a board. Those are all 2D surfaces and remember that the area vector points 90 degrees away from those surfaces. Because remember that we've always said area is length times width but length and width are vector products so if your length goes in one direction and your width goes in the other direction if you cross them that creates a third vector which is your area vector so your length up cross with your width actually sends the area vector back into the page or back to the left with this 3d drawing and to have strong magnetic flux we've got to have three things we can have the strength of the magnetic field we could have a large area to have large magnetic flux and we could have a large angle between the field and the surface. So to find magnetic flux, it is the integral of B dot dA. Remember B is in Tesla's area, will be in meters squared. So B dot dA gives us a magnetic flux measured in, so we have a new unit here for magnetic flux in the Weber. Now we can have flux through squares or rectangular areas, circles, and if we have multiple circles, we then call that a solenoid. So if I want to add up the total flux through an entire solenoid here, it would be B times A, so the magnetic field going through that area, and since it's a solenoid, I have to know the number of turns. So it actually gives you NBA for the total magnetic flux through a solenoid. Magnetic field is out and area vector is out. So they have to be parallel to each other to have magnetic flux. If the area was up, the field was parallel to that surface, then you'd have actually no flux whatsoever. So since it's a dot product, flux can also be written as N B A cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the area. So like you can see here, yes, I need to figure out how much of the magnetic field is pointing in the direction of the area or vice versa since they are dot products with each other. So this brought us to Lenz's law, which was the entire demonstration we saw in lab that when we have conductors, and the conductor is not attached to a power supply or anything, what we get is an induced EMF, or an induced voltage in the loop, if and only if the magnetic flux is changing. What the induced EMF does is it drives currents in those loops to resist the change in magnetic flux, and we call this magnetic inertia. So objects want to keep the amount of flux that they have, whether they have no flux in the beginning, or whether they have flux, they don't want that flux amount to change. If it does, the loop will create currents to try and resist that. So let's look at this example here. Let's say I have a square loop and there's a magnetic field that's coming out of the page. The first thing I need to know is, is there flux? So magnetic flux is that there is a magnetic field and it's parallel to the area. The area is in or out of the page and so is the magnetic field, so yes, we do have flux. But if I want to induce currents in that loop and have currents flow around the loop, I need my flux to change. One way I can change the flux would be with this. What happened now is that I just experienced a larger magnetic field. That loop wants to maintain the original flux that it used to have. So it used to have six dots in there, now it has nine dots. So what the loop's gonna do is create its own current so that it can resist the change in flux. If you wanna think about it this way, it's gonna send its own induced magnetic field back against the increasing magnetic field. So to throw a magnetic field into the page from the loop, currents must start flowing in the loop in this direction. Put your thumb in the direction of the current, curl your fingers, and you can see that anywhere around there we throw a magnetic field back into the page. So we get a current that is induced 
in the clockwise direction because it wants to maintain the original flux that it used to have. So let's try another scenario. Let's let the flux stay the same. Well, the first question is again, do we have magnetic flux? And yes, we do. We have magnetic field passing through an area. The next question, is that flux changing? And in this case, we said the magnetic field is constant, so there is no change in magnetic field. There is no change in magnetic flux. And if there's no change in magnetic flux, then the induced current equals zero. There is no current because the loop is used to the magnetic field that it has right at this moment. It doesn't need to change the magnetic flux. It doesn't need to increase it or decrease it. It's happy with the flux that it has right now. In this third example here, you can see that the magnetic field is decreasing. Well, if the magnetic field is decreasing, we still have magnetic flux, but the magnetic field is going away and the loop's not gonna like that. The loop was used to having a certain amount of magnetic flux, so it's gonna send its own magnetic field back out of the page. And in order to send magnetic field out of the page, it's gonna have to send an induced current in the counterclockwise direction. So that if you curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, put your thumb in the direction of current, you get dots to come back out of the page to maintain the old flux that it used to have. Okay, but in all these examples, what we did was we just changed the magnetic field. Flux depends on the number of loops and the area and the angle. So let's do this. Let's still have the original scenario having six dots of magnetic field coming out of the page. In the second scenario, the area of the loop increases. So as the area increases, there was magnetic flux originally, but now we have more magnetic flux. We have more dots trapped in that red area than we used to have in that black area. So now that we've got more dots, the loop's not going to like that. The loop wants to maintain the original flux that it used to have. So to maintain that, it's gonna send its own magnetic field back into the page to counteract the increase in magnetic flux. And as the magnetic flux is increasing, to send magnetic field into the page, you need to send currents in the clockwise direction. Again, thumb in the direction of current and curl your hand so you can see that your fingers are pointing in towards the page here. Another way we can do this is we could shrink the area. What if the area of my loop shrinks down to this? It used to hold six magnetic field dots and now it's only holding two magnetic field dots. So what that loop's gonna wanna do is create its own magnetic field to maintain the flux. The area shrunk, which means the magnetic flux changed and as any time there's a change in magnetic flux, we want to see an induced current. So that loop is going to send its own magnetic field back out of the page, and to do that, you must send current in this direction. So the current is counterclockwise, so that it throws dots out to try and maintain the old flux that it used to have. Now the last thing that we could change in this is the angle. Right now, the area and the magnetic field are perfectly parallel to each other. The areas are in and out of the page, and the magnetic field is out of the page. But if the loop suddenly went from this orientation to this orientation, now the angle between the magnetic field and the area have changed. If the angle between the magnetic field and the area change, then we went from having maximum flux to having less flux. So the magnetic flux decreased, which means that that loop's gonna wanna try and maintain the same amount of flux it used to have, which means it wants to throw dots out of the page. So hopefully in the 3D drawing you can see that to throw magnetic field out of the area, I'm gonna have to have currents flow in this direction. So you can see currents only are induced when we have changes to the magnetic flux. So the way I can describe how this example works is let's say we have the North Pole of Magnet heading towards a loop. The loop is not attached to anything, but I know that there is magnetic field pointing out of the North Pole and into the South Pole. So the magnetic field is pointing to the right. As that magnet gets closer to the loop, the magnetic flux is going to increase because the magnetic field is going to increase. So what the loop will do is send magnetic field back against the incoming magnet. It wants to resist the change of that increasing magnetic field. So again, if you put your hands on the loop and put your thumb in the direction of the current to send out magnetic field back towards that magnet, you do get currents to flow in that direction. So they go up and over the loop to send magnetic field back at it. And again, since it's magnetic inertia, you can see that that creates a little north pole back towards the real permanent magnet. So yes, the loop would resist and doesn't want 
the magnetic flux to increase whatsoever. So this is trying to show you exactly what I just said. As the magnet approaches, you can see that the magnetic field strength from B1 is to the right, and the change in B1 is to the right as well. The loop will induce magnetic field 2 to react to that increase in magnetic flux, trying to maintain the same flux it used to have, and the induced current in the ring must be in this direction so that it can create its own magnetic field to resist that change. So the question here is, why is the induced current in the direction that is shown? The permanent magnet isn't moving. So the permanent magnet does have a magnetic field, we said away from north, but now the loop is moving. Well, as the loop moves away, it's decreasing the amount of magnetic flux because the magnetic field is getting weaker out there. And what the loop's gonna wanna do is maintain the old flux it had to the right. So to do that, it's gonna send its own magnetic field to the right to try and maintain this setup. And if you put your thumb on the conductor and put it in the direction of current to throw field to the right, the current must flow in the direction that was indicated. So it flows in the opposite direction. Here's a question. What happens if the velocity of the bar magnet's zero and the velocity of the loop is zero? Magnetic flux may be present, but the change in magnetic flux equals zero. And if there's no change in magnetic flux, there's no reason for that loop to create its own magnetic field to try and resist this. So practice these. We gave a page that you can practice on and make sure you understand which direction that the induced current will flow because of a change in magnetic flux.